I want to take a look at the latest release candidate for Darktable, which is an open source uh, image editor, and see how this well this will work for infrared photos. So this is Darktable 3 release candidate 1. Uh, so this is not the final version. There's some, maybe some changes before the final version is released. If you haven't used Darktable before, um, there's some similar uh, paradigms to Lightroom and other programs. Lighttable is the organization cataloging area, and Darkroom is where we do editing. So if I double click on image, then it will open up in the Darkroom. And what's di one of the things that's different about Darktable is there's just a lot more modules, uh, sort of the Lightroom equivalent of a develop module that you can use. And you can see a list of them down here by clicking on more modules. There's a Dozens of them, so a whole bunch to, pl to play with. Um, and then in addition to that, um, you can search for them individually um, and find them up here in the search box. So um, first of all, if I get started, I can look for a channel mixer. Just type CH. There's the channel mixer. And what's really nice is that there's um, this uh, hamburger menu uh, shows uh, presets, and I can click on that, and right here is a swap R and G, uh, R and B, so red and blue channels. So if I hit that, then I get the channel swap. So that was pretty easy. Um, but I, I never did a white balance. So let's type in white balance. We can pick that tool up. Now the what we want to do for white balance is go down to preset um, and select spot. And with spot, I can actually draw on the image uh, where I want to get my white balance from. So if I draw in the foliage, um, it'll, it'll, you'll get one white balance. I could draw on the ground here, get a different white balance, draw on the bench, get another white balance. So you've got lots of different choices here. Um, so you can play around and, and get a white balance that you like. Okay, so now that I've got a white balance that I like, we've, we're starting to see some, some color separation. Um, I'm going to go into the uh, basic um, adjustments panel. And from here, I can bring my exposure up, get this about where I want it to be. All right, that's a little bit better. Now I can see everything a little bit better. Okay. Bring in a little bit of contrast. All right, so now it's shaping up really well. So now what I want to do is take a look at some of the, the color choices uh, that you get with Darktable specifically, uh, because I think some of these are the most interesting. Uh, for infrared. So if I just type in color, I can start to see all the modules that appear. Color zones is really interesting. So with color zones, uh, first I can use this dropper and and pick a color that I want to uh, modify. So let's say I pick this a sky color. Now it'll that'll draw a line um, in the this color map that I can use to affect the lightness, the saturation, or the hue. So let's say I wanted to tweak the hue and get a little bit more of a traditional blue sky. I could pull this up a little bit and that will get me, you can see this kind of gradations give me a hint of wh where I'm heading. I can increase the saturation and maybe drop the lightness a bit. So some options for playing with my sky. And then I can do the same thing with say foliage colors. So I could pick that, pick a spot over here. That'll show me in the map where I'm at. And let's say I want to increase my saturation. So get some pop in the foliage there. And maybe I want to go with a different hue. So I want to tweak that a bit. So I can move that up and down. So into a yellow, green, all the way to a teal. And then on the downside, I can get into these pinks. So a lot of, lot of flexibility here for adjusting my colors with this uh, color zone tool. So that's really nice. Um, another interesting tool is the color contrast. So this is a bit of a, a little bit of a kind of a color balance tweak uh, that you can use just uh, to, to alternate between the green and magenta or the yellow and blue. So if I want to come in here and tweak these a little bit, that can be a nice tool for managing your colors. So there's another option. Um, and then another tool um, for um, uh, 
managing colors is color balance uh, module. And this one is really powerful. We've got some master controls for color, so saturation um, and some color contrast. But in addition to that, there's individual controls for the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. And I can use this to, to really color things differently. So, for example, if I wanted to come into the shadows of this image, and let's say, um, oh, let's just get crazy and say I want to add some purple here uh, to the shadows. I can bring that up. You can start to see a little bit of shadows, a little bit of purple coming into the shadows there. And then let's say I wanted to go to the highlights and I want to add some yellows to the highlights. So I'll set that at the hue and then with the saturation, I can start to add in some yellows to the highlights, which in this case is really just going to start to hit the sky and some other things. So, but lots of, lots of uh, choices here for uh, manipulating color. Uh, the other thing, a couple things that you should know about how Darktable modules work is that you can use this um, switch to turn on and off the effects. So I can see, oh, there's the effect of, you know, the adding the purple shadows and the yellow sky into my image. And then also I can reset those uh, through this little icon here uh, so to reset the parameters. I can create a duplicate instance of this panel. So if I want to do two different uh, types of color balance uh, or two different things with any module. I can do that here and then there's presets So many of these like like when we did the uh, the channel mixer. There's a preset available also um, for um, uh, Built-in is uh, layer options so I can go ahead and set this as a layer uh, uh, for masking and What's really nice about that is then I get the full complement of blend modes um, and opacity, so there's a lot of really cool things you can do there with uh, with some of these effects through uh, the, the layer tools. So that's really nice. So um, one other tool that I wanted to show you is the um, contrast equalizer. And this, this is, I think, has a lot of relevance uh, for infrared photos because um, some of the cool effects that it produces. So it's sort of like... Um, the, uh, the clarity you'd see in Lightroom or some of the, the micro con contrast tools you'd see in, in other tools, but the amount of control here is uh, pretty amazing. So I can decide whether I want to work with uh, coarse uh, details or fine details. And so if I drag up and down, I can start to see some of the effects. So if I work on the coarse de details, I can get some of these sort of glowing effects, sort of the wood effect that is pretty popular with infrared from the film days. Um, but also I can come over to the fine side and use this to really increase uh, and, or, or decrease the contrast around edges, um, which can add a lot of pop to images as well. Um, so I go over to the Luma channel where I can really see there a lot more contrast kicking in. So. There's a, a ton of playing around you can do here. So much things you could do with this tool to affect the contrast of your images. Very, very powerful. So this is, again, this was the um, release candidate uh, version for Darktable 3, the open source image editor. Um, you can do all-in-one image editing for infrared. You can do your channel swap, uh, set your white balance, and do all of your processing it within one program. Uh, very, very powerful. Complex for sure but very powerful tool uh, for editing your photos. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks.